Hello and welcome to the second part of this tutorial on multi-layer keys. Now so far we've taken an image which was shot against a green screen, if I click here you can see the original up here, and we've dragged that down to our timeline and we have just renamed it in the timeline. So we've renamed it skin and we've applied the key light effect and what we've done with the key light effect is we've taken the blacks up a bit, we've dragged the whites down a bit and if I go from final result to combine matte you can see that the blacks are now truly black, the whites are truly white, what is grey or should be grey is grey, including some of this fine detail in the hair, so that we don't over smooth it. And we've done something called push-pull, we've pushed the blacks, we've pulled the whites, to get the best result that we can. There's obviously a little bit of smoothing in the hair, but it's certainly not completely flat, which is the problem you can sometimes get if you overdo these bits and pieces and create some very flat images. Okay, I'm going to go back to final result. Now what we want to do is start to deal with this issue of spill. We've got green spill on her arm, underarm here and in her armpit and under here, a little bit of green spill on her face on this arm over here. Basically the lady is standing in front of a well-lit green screen and it is splashing light back at her, but as well as affecting her skin it's also affecting her dress and to a lesser extent there's a little bit of green spill in her hair. And what we would really ideally want to do is a separate layer for each one of these issues. So let's show you how to deal with the spill issue. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so we can see a bit better. And if you look over here, you'll see that there is an item called despill bias. Please note also that it is actually animatable, as is the screen color. So if your actor walks across screen and the screen color changes and the despill changes, you can actually animate them to reflect the different lighting situations that they might encounter as they're going across a very wide green screen but we're not going to be doing animation, I just wanted to point that out. So I'm going to go to Despill Bias and I'm going to click the little colour picker and what I'm looking for is not where the problem is but what it should actually look like. So I don't want to click where there is already a problem, what I want to look at is normal skin colour and I reckon that her skin under her arm should probably look something like the skin under here, this is fairly shaded, this is fairly shaded, so I think if I click around here I should be selecting the colour that the skin should be and that should help to deal with the despill bias. Now it will affect everything else in the shot but overall it should certainly deal with the problem we have with the skin. So look at the difference when I click just here. You see what a big difference that is. Now it's despilled quite a lot of the green out of the, this, this, this see-through chiffon or whatever it's called underneath here but also it's taken all the green out from under her armpit, under her arm, her arm over here and her face and we've dealt with the problem of the green on her skin. However, you can clearly see that we've not dealt with the problem of the green in her dress and we're going to need to do that with a separate layer. And we would also probably want to perhaps do one for the edge of her hair, but um, I'm not going to do all of these because there's not enough time. But let's look at her dress. Now to do her dress, what we really need to do is mask off the area that we want to deal with. Now the problem is mainly over here, there's not much of a problem over here, but we need to create a mask. Now the simplest way of doing this is to take the original layer, the skin layer, which has already got the key light applied and pretty much set to the right values, and just to duplicate it. So Control or Command D, and rename it at once. So rather than Skin 2, let's just call this one Dress. Hit Return. And then around the dress, the area that we now want to deal with, we want to draw a mask. And we want to keep this mask fairly tight, but still allow for a bit of feathering. So I'm going to zoom out just slightly and I'm going to take my pen tool and I'm just going to do this quickly. You can obviously spend a bit more time on it when you're working on your own project. So we'll click and allow enough room to feather it because obviously feathering is pretty important. And we haven't got much of a problem up here actually and not much of a problem down here either but I'm going to keep these relatively tight and finish off my mask. And now I've got just this area here, and if I just turn off the other layers, you'll see that this is just this area. Now the first thing we need to do, I'm going to go back to my selection tool, is select the layer and hit F for feather, and we can feather the mask. Just begin to feather it out a bit, 
so that we get a better look. And then the next thing we need to do is animate it. Now, I didn't start at the beginning, but I think we're okay if I go to the beginning. And I'm only going to do two seconds. So if I go to two seconds on my timeline and hit N at the end of my work area, and now I'm going back to the beginning and I can animate my mask. So if I open up my mask and hit the mask path, and I go to the end of two seconds, the best thing you can do with a mask is move the whole thing in one go. So if you double click a point, the whole thing's available and you can shift the whole thing across in one. Now that's the best thing you can do with a mask. If you need to move an individual point, I'm going to click away, I'll click back on the layer. If you need to move individual points, it's better to try and move a selection of points. Just click and drag to draw a marquee around these points and then I can move all of those points separately if I want. Control Z to undo that. It's better to be able to move a range of points or the whole mask in one for smoother results. However, now that I've done that, I'm going to turn on the layers underneath and I'm now going to change the D spill, which presently was looking at the skin, to the dress. So how should the dress look? Well, if I take the D spill picker here and I look for an area on the dress that I think should be the real color of the dress, and I reckon just here is the real color of the dress, and click on there, you can see that the D spill has been done beautifully just here. Click down the way to deselect it and pull away and you can see the end result is looking really good. Fit. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring down the original and drop it below those two so that we can have a little look at the differences that we've made. Now at the moment you can see the original green screen background, but with the skin one which includes everything except the dress and the skin on top. So if I turn those both off, you can see that that's what we started with. Then we added on the skin, look at the difference that that's made. Certainly dealt with all these issues of green spill around under her arm, before and after. And then if we add on the dress afterwards, you can see that we've got the dress looking the right colour. And we're beginning to recover how the shot should look. Now I might from here go on to do a further one for the edge of her hair. It's not too bad, but I might want to do with a few issues around here. And that's the way you can build up these keys with multiple layers. However, occasionally you come across something that's got a real problem with lines. And that needs a slightly different approach, which I'm going to demonstrate in the next tutorial. Mm -hmm.